no need to panic. If someone has asked you to do this, review a department on a holistic level, and you're not really sure how to do that, this video is for you. I'm going to take you through a number of steps, models, or approaches, if you like, as to how you could actually approach having this conversation with the person who is asking this from you, how you can then structure your research, your diagnosis, your fact-finding process, how to actually establish a problem statement, produce a number of solutions or recommendations, and eventually submit your report for a further conversation. If you find yourself in this situation where your manager, your department head, director, executive lead, anyone really asks you to review a department on a holistic level from people's side to really understand what sort of people challenges they're dealing with, the number one thing is to really ask questions around the scope and the remit. Is it the whole of the department in scope or is it a particular team or a project team as part of that department? Once you've understood the scope and the remit as to who you will need to sort of assess on a holistic level, the next steps are is to discuss questions around what sort of challenges and problems they could be dealing with. So this person who is requesting this from you could be making lots of statements, lots of assumptions as to what that could be. So for example, for us who are people consultants or HR professionals, HR business partners, that can often be around leadership and management challenges or capabilities. Sometimes it could be employee experience or culture of a particular team or sometimes it could be around career progression and talent management and many other options that could crop up. So therefore, it's quite important to understand quite a lot of detail as to where that's coming from, what sort of challenges they're experiencing, what they're seeing, hearing and feeling as well is also a, a good measuring tool to really understand what sort of concerns and anxieties our leaders are actually dealing with. I would like to add that really it all starts from lots of assumptions and assumptions could be really reasonable or unreasonable. We don't really know that. And in my experience, they often tend to be quite vague and unspecific in terms of what we really need to do. So therefore, it's quite important to list all these assumptions and find a way to translate them into hypothesis that's going to be a bit more specific, a bit more smart, detailed, measurable, that we could test further whether that hypothesis is true or false, which will ultimately help us understand if any of these assumptions are true or false. I would now like to take you through a typical consultancy model that you can use if you find yourself in this situation. Step one is all about contracting or agreement, if you prefer this term. It's all about that entry point, understanding the scope, the remit, people you need to speak with, what sort of data exist, reports, surveys, anything really you can get your hands on that would give you a good and solid starting point. For me, the key question in this first initial conversation is to establish expectations. What do they expect from you? What can you expect from them? what they would like to see in this particular report so you really know what you need to do in order to actually manage those expectations. The next step is all about diagnosis, analysis, fact-finding, spending good quality time reading and analyzing data sets, reading various surveys, reports, audits, anything really you can get your hands on. You will also find spending quite a lot of time in various one-to-one -one meetings. You will have to schedule relevant meetings with relevant managers, leaders, stakeholders, people you need to speak with in order to learn from them their professional views, professional judgment and assumptions about this particular department and a particular team. I also suggest you speak to various members in your own function. So if you work in HR, I would actually spend good quality time speaking to various colleagues to really see if any of them have worked with this particular department before, if they've done something for them before that could be useful for you. You would be surprised how much work tends to be done, but it doesn't get captured in one place as many people kind of move on. And in my experience, that corporate knowledge, knowledge management, management transfer is very poor, but it can be very important when it comes to understanding and getting that fantastic insight as to what this particular department is dealing with, especially when it comes to reviewing a department on a holistic level. If you have never drafted a problem statement, but now you find yourself you need to learn how to do that and how to present your problem statement in a quite clear and concise and structured way, I do suggest you read a blog by Chris Lindstrom, managing partner of Septara, in his blog, How to Draft a Problem Statement, you will learn how to do that. In a nutshell, a problem statement is a description of a number of issues, which has a vision statement, issue statement, and a method statement. 
Vision is all about what does the world look like if we solve the problem. Issue statement is one or two sentences that describe the problem using specific issues. And method is the process that will get followed to solve the particular problem. It's very important to be curious and ask lots of questions to establish your problem statement. So when you start to engage with various stakeholders who you need to speak to or interview, if you like, as part of your research, it's quite important to ask the following questions. Who? Who does the problem affect? Is it a specific group or organizations or customers, etc.? What? What are the boundaries of this problem? Is it organizational? Is it workflow related? Is it geographic, customer, segments, etc.? What's the issue, what is the impact of this issue, what will happen when it's fixed, and what would happen if we actually didn't even solve this problem. When? When does the issue occur? When does it need to be fixed? Where? Where is the issue occurring? Is it in certain locations, processes and products, or is it all over the place? Finally, why? Why is it important that we fix the problem? What impact does it have on the business or customers? What impact does it have on all stakeholders, employees, suppliers, customers, shareholders? The key message with drafting and establishing problem statements is that they have to be solvable. Our solutions have to be realistic, possibly achieved within a reasonable time frame. And that's quite important to define as well. And how easily can you measure it? How easily can we measure the relevant outcome, the relevant success of this solution? Let's look at an example. Our IT department wants to have stable, skilled and capable teams by having the right people at the right place at the right time in order to deliver successfully on the IT strategy and project milestones. This is not the case at the moment due to high attrition, let's say 20%. Long and protracted recruitment processes, it takes, let's say, six months to start in a new role. Lack of people managers, let's say there are only 15 people managers versus 300 employees. Straight away, you can see there is a challenge around management capacity to manage all these people. Teams in flexibility due to specialist versus generalist skills. So there could be more specialists than generalists and therefore a bit difficult to move people around. Roles and responsibilities are not clear, lack of clarity around objectives. If above is not addressed, then the IT strategy will not be delivered and IT projects will not be delivered successfully and on time. These problems can be resolved by ensuring the business leaders and managers are really clear on what they need to do and lead on by establishing a clear people plan that will focus on what, how, communication, delivery and governance to be led by a relevant senior leadership team with HR assistance and contribution where required. The next step is about feedback. So by the time you get to this stage, you will already have a lot of insight about this particular department or a team. You will have read about data, people data, analyzed it. You will have read many reports, surveys, and you will have spoken to quite a lot of people. When it comes to gathering various people's feedback, I do suggest you find a way to group them or theme them, as many of them may overlap as well. So I think by the time you get to this stage, you will already have a good good, solid picture in your head as to what could be going on in this particular department. So you would then gather it all, maybe start drafting your report and go back to the person who's made this request to give them an update and take them through your initial findings and initial problem statements or proposals, if you like. You may need some further clarity and guidance from this person that's going to be very important for next steps of your evaluation and eventually producing a report. The next step in your process is about solutions. So now we've got some problem statements, we've tried to close some of these gaps, we've got more clarity as to what sort of problems they're dealing with, we've dealt with some assumptions, we tested some of these hypotheses, and now we are ready to actually submit a number of solutions or options or recommendations, you choose how you want to call them, and produce an action plan that goes alongside those options. And the very last step of this process is about evaluation. So you have submitted your report, a preferred option has been discussed and approved alongside with relevant action plan. Evaluation step is all about how effective this action plan and proposal has been. That's it for this video. If you have liked this video, there are many other similar ones on my channel. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.